Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mission Impact Series with Tracy B. Allen and Ty Boone. And today we're continuing part two of uh, From Impact to Inspiration. And today we're going to be talking about evaluating effectiveness. So we're going to examine how nonprofit organizations and social enterprises can evaluate the effectiveness of their programs and services because you have to do that, right? Um, this includes discussing program and service frameworks and methodologies, um, exploring the roles of stakeholder um, feedback and program evaluation, because yes, your board of directors does have a say, um, and whoever is on your auxiliary board, right? And uh, sharing examples of organizations that have successful, um, successfully evaluated the effectiveness of their programs. So my name again is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of Impactors Management Group, where I help social enterprises and other social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. <laughs> All right, my name is Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and Success. There is no success without impact. <laughs> so we're gonna put that out there. Right? And, and there's no impact without measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was talking to someone. I guess it was this morning. You know about their what kind of tools do you use to to you know to to measure your programs? And she's like, I don't know. Like we just do, we just do the work, and I know the people come. And I'm like, well, that's why we got no money. Like, like, that, like that's why you don't have any money because what what are you looking at? Right. Who's looking at it, right? And you mentioned you know boards and, and folk who are coming that, that don't even have boards. Like what how do you internally evaluate your organization if you don't have a board and a team? Because you're, you know you're not you're in compliance. Because you're not running the, the organization compli in compliance. So everything, if you don't have a board, I know your entire nonprofit is raggedy. <laughs> raggedy i said it yesterday it's like if you don't have a board you don't have an organization because mm -hmm. you so you, you got to go back and you got to rethink what are you even doing because mm -hmm. who is going to do those internal checkups to ensure that you are operating according to your mission and, and that you're 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 building the bridge to your vision how do you know that's even happening or you're just out here doing something every day well i think, I think it goes through. back again to, sorry, not to cut you off, but I think it goes back again to the lack of information when it comes to how a nonprofit is set up and how it works. Mm -hmm. And so again, we will say it again, you don't own it. So most of the people who don't have a board is because they're under the misconception that they own the nonprofit organization. So they put their blood, sweat and tears into it and their money and they want to make all of the decisions. And that's all well and good, but it's not yours. It is not your commodity. You can't own it. You will never own it. And you need to acquiesce to the proper place, which is to the board of directors. So I think that's where the first problem comes in when we're talking about boards who are not, I mean, sorry, nonprofit organizations who are not able to effectively evaluate because they don't have checks and balances in place. Things were just not set up correctly from the very beginning. You're gonna get a whole lot of frowns for that statement that you just made, right? Because people are like, I, oh, I'm, I, I, I didn't. I'm just I'm saying, saying it's a know. truth. <laughs> people are doing, you know, like I'm. A, somebody told me that I that I do own this thing. Well, they mm -hmm. they didn't tell you the truth because when you when you incorporated, you said that you you understood that you don't own this. You're not. This is not for personal gain. Right. And then all of a sudden, you flip the switch. And and now you think you own it, um, and that's where the trouble comes because there has to be some internal um, evaluation, or or you're just going to be in the same place, mm -hmm. you know. And that I think that's why a lot of people are, are standing still in their organizations, really not understanding. Well, why can't I get funding? Why can't I get growth? Why can't I get partnerships? Because, like you said, Tracy, they're not built on the right foundation. There's no, there's nothing internal. There's nobody else to look at what you're doing in the organization, even if you're gonna, you know, if your board, you, you survey your board for satisfaction purposes, um, you survey your board just to ensure, hey, do you do you think that we're 
we're doing the right things for this mission or this vision or whatever, people don't want some, it, people to go against them. So they're not going to ask those kind of questions. So they, so they don't want to do internal evaluation. So, uh, you know, look at your staff and ask your staff questions. Are you are you satisfied working here? Um, you know, you're working with the unhoused community. You're doing outreach. Are you are you OK with doing this job? You know, those kind of things that are internal. Do you think it's, you know, are we providing you with the right resources that you need to go out and do outreach? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things at the bottom, even before you get into program evaluation, what what are we doing with this organization um, to ensure that we're fulfilling the, the mission? Right. And then when we talk about programs, um, you know, we, we first have to start with the logic model, right? That's kind of where it starts. You can't decide to build out a nonprofit program. You could get away with maybe maybe a for-profit, even though I think in your for-profit, you still should be doing using the logic model, but definitely in a nonprofit program, you should start with the logic model. And when we get to the evaluation component, most people don't know how to evaluate the program or the service that they're offering because they did not start with the logic model. Because if they started with the logic mm -hmm. model, the evaluation component is already outlined in that logic model before you even started mm -hmm. to implement any of your programs or services. So it's mm -hmm. getting with someone who is good with program development and letting them help you to build out a program or service or services that will keep you in compliance and get you the data that you're going to need when you go out to get funding, right? Um, like Ty mentioned in the last one, a lot of times people come to us and they're looking for funding, but they have no data to back up anything that they're saying. And funders are all about the numbers. They want to see how many people you've served, um, how many of these people have had transformative effects, again, impact, right? Uh, all of these things, but starting with the, the framework, the methodology, the first thing you need to do is to sit down and do the logic model. And then from there, you build out your curriculum. If you're doing a program or you build out your steps for how your program or service is going to work, everything from intake, advertising, um, acquiring the clients, intake, you know, actually carrying out the service, offboarding, following up, all of it because you have to follow up to get the transformative effect. You have to follow mm -hmm. up to get that impact because someone finishing your class, say you're having a program, someone completing the program is not impact. <laughs> that's just, that's not impact. A lot of people think that that is impact, but it is not. It's what happens after that. Because I, mm -hmm. I mean, you've been here for a long time. You have heard me say that I could do a GED class right and that person passed their ged that's great that's great numbers for our organization but have i truly created impact if that person doesn't take that ged and now use it to get a better job or to go into community college or to a trade or something that is truly going to impact and change their lives because i could have a piece of paper yes i completed the ged but if i'm not going to do anything with it then what's true impact created it's like cutting a tree down in the forest if you cut it down and nobody's there did it make a noise you know <laughs> seriously so um making sure that you're able to follow up with those people and again i know we sound like a broken uh, broken record but making sure you have those partnerships if you don't um do deal with employment services then you have a partner. So they finish their GED with you. You send them on to the next person who helps them to get their resume, make sure they get some type of um, upskilling or training or help them to find a better job or negotiate better salaries on their jobs, whatever it is. So because that transformative effect and that, the other thing with transformative effect is that transformative effect trickles down. And that's that's what we want. We want that trickle down effect. So I get my GED. Um, I'm able to get a better job. That probably means I'm able to work, um, move into a better and a better neighborhood. Then my kids are able to get into a better school. So that changes that whole family dynamic, right? And 
mm -hmm. my kids will have a better life. So that, there's some trickle down effect right there, right? And that may inspire mm -hmm. someone else in my family who has been in the same situation or similar situation to me to go ahead now, get their GED and so on and so forth. That's what we're looking, that's how communities are transformed is through that trickle down right. effect. That's true impact. Right, impact, you know, changing someone's situation, their environment, their circumstance. That's what it's all about. Um, I think a, a lot of times we get lost in programs. You, you know, people are think it's too much effort to put together a logic model. And you have to put a, every program that you have needs a logic model. Once you mm -hmm. start to work through this thing, you need to identify, you know, your what are your goals? What are your objectives so that you can know that you're working toward impact? Like what what kind, what are, what are you trying to accomplish with this program? What's that big thing? that big change that you're trying to make, you know, just like you said with the GD program, the, the ultimate goal is to get this person to be more self-sufficient, more independent, maybe a better career, move to a better neighborhood, all these things. So what do I do in the meantime to help them get there? I, get, I help them to get their GED, but I know I can't stop there because a GED alone is not going to get me a better job. But I have these resource partners. I have the supportive care network. I have all these people or all these other entities and organizations out there that I can connect them to, to ensure that these things happen. And I, you know, again, like we said before, sometimes we just get too territorial. And when we do that, we yeah. lose our population at impact because it's like, well, I can't, I can't send you across town for resume services because I think I want to do resume services one day. Yeah. <laughs> but we're, yeah. If you ain't doing it yet, go ahead over there so they can get the resume done. Yeah. Right. I mean, and then and you know that you've created an impact when you know you change somebody's life. And in the I think we are so used to microwavable things. We're not uh -huh. patient enough to um to really understand and address impact because impact takes a little time. It takes a little bit more time than somebody showing up to my workshop it takes a little bit more time than me, you know, just giving out food on the street. Or, or, you know, the GED t testing, that takes a little time, but to know whether or not this person actually moved to a new place or got this mm -hmm. job, or did, that takes a little bit more time. Or we're like, okay, I ain't in it for all that, so I'm, not, I'm just going to stop right here and go do what they want to do. But being mm -hmm. able to, to, to look long term of things, this is how you get into those multi-year funding situations mm -hmm. where you say, hey, we know that you're, this person may not be able to get a house, but if they work with us year one, year two, and year three, by year three or year five, we can ensure that they have housing. So now I have a better argument for a funder that has multi-year funds um, because I can know that I can follow this person or this group of people through impact. Right, exactly. And again, it's all about the transformation. The end goal is to transform the life, not just to get people through your programs and be like, okay, well, I got a hundred people went through my program this year, but you know nothing about them after they've left your program, right? So I could have gotten my GED and I could have just gone back to my apartment and sat on my couch and watched Jerry Springer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, um, but I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I could have also gotten my GED and I could have gotten a job in the doctor's office. I could have gotten my, myself a job in some government agency because now I have at least a high school diploma equivalent mm -hmm. and I'm able to get a different, but you would never know. You mm -hmm. would never know. Okay. Because you didn't do that follow-up. It doesn't end yep. with whatever program or service you are administering it ends with the transformation, making sure that transformation lasts. Um, as a, a rule of thumb, I tell people, you don't really have to follow up after three years. It'll be nice if you could continue to follow up, but at least three years, because three years is how long true change <laughs> actually mm -hmm. takes effect, right? If somebody's able to mm -hmm. sustain for three years, more than likely, they're going to be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if something should happen after that point in time, they will come back to you because you were following up with them. Mm -hmm. Right. So they will come back if they need additional services or something else after that. So and if you right. really made it, they will come, they will let you know. So they're yes. like, oh, you know, <laughs> was something that you really made an impact, you know, like you said. Usually people fall out of service, you know, two, three mm -hmm. years. They're like, oh, whatever, I don't need that anymore. But even mm -hmm. if you were to off, you know, you talk about offboarding, 
You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you graduated from my services, let me let me follow up. Let me let me give you a survey or questionnaire or something to ask you how did you benefit from my service? Yeah, you've been with mm -hmm. us for a year and a half or two years, or whatever. Do you think that we help you make a change in your situation or your circumstance or whatever? Right. Right. We don't we don't I don't think we we adequately offboard people. We just kind of let them go, let them float out in to never never <laughs> land. It's we don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know what happened to them afterwards. I mean, a lot of us are guilty of that. You know, I've done it sometimes too. But some people, I just don't want to follow up. Some people, I was going to say, some people, don't, don't call me, I won't call you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, 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 you know, if it's a situation like that, that's different. When you're running a nonprofit organization, you you know, like I said, if you can't do it, you need to give it to somebody else because those numbers are going to become super important to you. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for I know. Right? All right, y'all. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us today. Um, our next in our next episode, we're going to be talking about inspiring impact stories. So we'll just briefly tell you one or two stories about people who have created an impact and how that happened. Until next time, make sure that your mission is creating positive impact within your communities. Bye-bye.